All right, welcome to Knicks.com. Jonah Ballo here with assistant coach Rashid Hazard, and uh, we're preparing for another matchup against the Hawks. I believe it's the 15th of the year or so far. This will actually uh, finish up the series in Atlanta, and uh, what a great win for your ball club on Sunday afternoon. And talk about that game where you know you shoot 50% from the floor, 40 from three, and do some really nice things in the paint defensively as well to get a win. Well, it's all about execution and paying attention to detail. And to our guys' credit, you know, they had a lot of carryover from the game plan and all the things we worked on leading up to that game and that we've been working on all season. It's just in this system, it takes time. And that's what you're seeing the result of right now is the time these guys have put in, the time we spent teaching the principles, the details, the footwork. And you just saw, you saw it all come together last night. And what can't be overlooked is how instrumental Carmelo was in that, you know, Everybody's trying to take him away and dare the other guys to beat him. And that's what this system does. When you have a star like Carmelo who draws so much attention, it allows for the other players to know where their shots are going to come from, where their opportunities are going to come. And last night you saw our guys capitalize on those opportunities. But Melo, I can't state enough how important he was to that happening. It was, it was great to see. You know, I've always felt he's been an underrated passer in, in his career, but is he, he's starting to see how he can be more effective when the scoreboard doesn't necessarily say Carmelo Anthony, 25, 30 points, 35 points. Is he now kind of seeing where these new team, mm -hmm. teammates are, where the offense is going to help him find those teammates and where they can be productive and take the load off his shoulders a little bit? I think it's part of that, but I think he's always seen that because we've had those conversations since I've gotten here, so he's seen it. I think he all, he watches the comfort level of his teammates and being able to make those plays and being confident in making those plays. And I think he sees their confidence rising, and I think that's what more or less made him more comfortable finding them. He's always been finding them, but they were making the shots. So there's a big difference. You know, yeah, yeah. I went through that in 2006-07 uh, when we had a team that didn't have as many guys like Derek Fisher and the guys that we ended up having 07-08. And it takes a minute for these guys to to jail and to figure out, okay, I have to take these shots when the opportunity arises. And so now these guys are more comfortable doing that. And last night was just, like I said, it was like a culmination of everything kind of coming together. Yeah, I don't think people realize how difficult it is for a guy like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, that to, you know, turn that switch on and off, when to get your teammates involved, when to become the scorer in the fourth quarter. I think it's incredibly challenging for them. And Carmelo Anthony doing a great job this season with that. What helps is a guy going seven of eight from the three-point line and hitting 14 shots sure. and scoring 38 points. What do you say about Aaron Aflalo's performance? I mean, that, that's what he can Came here for. He came here to kind of be the second in command to Carmelo. And I think, again, you saw him last night realize where his opportunities are coming, and, you know, he took them and he capitalized on them. And Aaron is a consummate professional. You know, I've had the pleasure of being a coach that gets to work closely with him, and you see him go through his process every day. And he cares so much about not only himself, but he cares about the group and doing what's right for the group. So early you saw him sacrificing when he first came back and trying to find the best way to help the group because that's what he's all about. He's the, to me, he's the ultimate team guy. And I think you really have seen that in him being willing to sacrifice, even though he's trying to show people in this league that he can be, you know, a second scorer and, a, and your second option on a really good team. And so I think to his credit, once again, you know, you just love seeing that from guys because it helps you build the winning culture that you're trying to build. And we saw a little bit of an adjustment in, in the lineups last night. Uh, you know, you take Kevin Serafin and, and Kyle Quinn essentially out because of the Thiago splitter. And, and Coach Fisher said that that's not that doesn't necessarily mean this is what's going to happen in the future. But it does give your squad a little bit of flexibility, right, to put Melo at the four, have Derek Williams play a little bit of three with him, and also stagger those lineups, lineups where you're getting Porzingis and Aflalo or Melo on the court at, at one time when they're not necessarily playing next to each other. Oh, for sure. But, you know, I'm not a believer in small ball. I, I'm just not. I believe that it is a, has to be a part of what you do. I believe you can't emulate the Golden State Warriors because you don't have a Steph Curry, a Klay Thompson, a Draymond Green. It's a great way to play and to mix it up. But ultimately, you have to put size on the court to win. And you saw that in the finals last year, even with Golden State a little bit, and understanding that you have to control the boards, you have to be able to control the paint defensively, and you can't do that with little guys. You know, but it's a great element to have, and it was it was fun to see it. You know, actually pay off and pay dividends last night, and 
Coach Fisher's done a great job in balancing and finding opportunities to put different lineups because two games ago, everybody was lauding him for the big lineup he threw out there. So once again, he's doing a great job in finding that balance and creating those, you know, creating those matches within our group. And I just think he has a real good eye for that. And I think it's he's not getting enough credit for it. Yeah, he said it last night. He said, I'm still finding ways to kind of mix and match, you know, when I'm going to use Kyle, when I'm going to use Kevin, maybe go small or big. But it, it really shows how versatile of a group you guys have. Sure. I think a little bit just quickly, the underrated part about yesterday's win, too, was Jaron Grant, uh, you know, with the 8.7 assists and just really getting up and down the floor, seemed confident again and, and had things going. Is that a good sign for you guys moving forward? Yeah, it's a great sign. He's a young player. He'll go through his ups yeah. and downs. I mean, it happens. You've seen uh, KP go through his ups and downs. It's what happens in this league is they find their way. But his talent is unquestioned. His basketball IQ, that goes unquestioned. You know, it's just a matter of when it all comes together for him. And last night, it came together for him. Tomorrow, it's a different game. You don't know what's going to happen. You hope that he finds that consistency that he needs to be a productive player every night. But, you know, while he's still young and he's still learning, you give him the benefit of the doubt. And once again, he has a great mentor in Coach Fisher who's been putting his arm around him and talking to him about the nuances of the position and how to be successful as a young player. And I, like I said, I can't say enough. I'm in that room with this guy. He's not getting enough credit for what he's done as a coach and as a leader and as a mentor. And it's, it's just been great to see and to watch his growth as well. Okay, you look at an Atlanta team. What is the biggest challenge when you face a squad this close together, you know, from a home floor uh, at the Garden where you get the win to their home floor where they had some success in the second half when you previously matched up against them? What is that challenge like for a team to kind of reset and then, you know, square off against this group for the final time of the year? It's actually a welcome challenge because it gives our guys, a, it gives us a chance as coaches to give our guys a preview of what it could be like in a playoff series. So now you as more of a playoff prep as opposed to just a single game. And so now we have to try to think what are their adjustments going to be. So we have to be prepared for the adjustments that they're going to make. They were in the Eastern Conference Finals. They're not going to come back and throw the same punches. You know, so we have to be prepared. And so it gives us a chance as a coaching staff that hasn't made the playoffs together to kind of introduce a playoff prep to go through something like that. And for Coach Fisher, who's done it obviously two million times as a player, but now it gives him a chance as a coach to kind of see what that approach is like. So it's really an exciting opportunity for us as a staff, as a team. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll throw our cards down and see what happens. But I think, you know, this group is resilient and they know how to bounce back and they've shown they can carry forth a game plan and that they can come and compete. And so, I'm looking forward to tomorrow and just seeing what it has to offer because that's the beautiful part about the NBA is you never know what each game has to offer. And so I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity for our group to continue to grow. That's just a great point to, you know, really preview what it is like in a playoff situation where you are facing those different matchups and adjustments every other night. What do you expect from this Atlanta team? And Dennis Schroeder didn't play. He got a DNP. That's a little bit of a surprise. And they have, you know, some good guards there. Shelvin Mack coming off the bench. But from a game plan, is there anything that you can expect that they would change in this matchup? They're going to compete harder. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a team that has championship aspirations. They probably felt like they didn't compete at the level they know they can last night for various different reasons, as Coach Budenholzer said. He gave us credit for how we competed. And so they're going to raise their level tomorrow. And so that's the first adjustment you know they're going to make. You know, tactic tactically, they'll do some different things, I'm sure, and forcing us to go to second and third options and have to make some reads and not give us our primary look. And that's what we have to prepare for. And like I said, it's just another great opportunity for the New York Knicks to grow. And I'm excited about it, and I hope our guys are excited about it. All right, Atlanta. Miami, San Antonio, this will be a fun road test and uh, really looking forward to the final matchup against the Hawks on Tuesday night. Appreciate it, Coach. Yep. Thank you. And these are the kind of weeks uh, as a coach, I may be crazy. I probably <laughs> am for choosing this profession, but these are the weeks that you look forward to because this is when win or lose, you find out a lot about your team and you find out kind of where you stack up against some of the best teams in the NBA. Miami's one season removed from a championship themselves. And so... You know, just again, wonderful opportunity for us to grow as an organization, as a team, and everybody here is excited. Nobody, there's no fear here, I guarantee you that.
I tell you what, our fans feel it too. I'm sure they're very excited. Let's get on this plane and do this thing. That's right, and we appreciate the fans for, you know, the energy they bring to the garden. I mean, I've been in Staples Center. I've been all over the NBA, and it's a special place to play, but it, we have to remember it's special because of the people who come to the games. And so I never lose sight of that. So really appreciate you guys as well. Great. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll uh, see you in Atlanta and get a winner, right? For sure. There he is. This is the coach Rashid Hazard right here on Knicks.com.